We are in chapter 4, section 2, and this is lesson 4, and today we will learn about a specific tradition of most Western African civilizations, and it is about how they transfer their knowledge, their history, their tradition from one generation to the next, which is known as the oral tradition. Okay, go ahead, grab a textbook or go to our website and log in to Clever and Cengage Learning and from there, Unit 2. And we are in Chapter 4 and specifically Section 2, West Africa. And from there, I want you to go to Lesson 4 and specifically, it's pages 116 to 117. Okay, now let's go straight to the objective of this lesson. So the objective of this lesson is to explain the contribution of oral history and the griot tradition in North and West African cultures. This chapter's essential question is what impact did trade and technology have on North and West Africa? So trade and technology shape the development of culture in North and West Africa. However, Lesson 2.4 discusses how cultural aspects have been handed down through oral tradition. Now let's take a look at the review and assess questions first so that we will be guided in this lesson. For number one, reading check. Why was oral tradition important in West Africa? Number two, analyze language use. How does the word captivate describe the ability of griots to perform? And finally, number three, draw conclusions. What might be the advantages and disadvantages of passing down history through oral tradition? Now you have to understand generally, history is passed down from one generation to the next through writing. If you've seen the movie Lion King, you're probably familiar with this character and his name is Rafiki. In my opinion, he symbolized or he plays a character of a griot. And a griot is a village storyteller slash priest slash historian and most likely an elder in the community. And he is the one who understands the signs and he tells stories about um, their great ancestors and he basically like a prophet and, you know, some kind of mystic. So griots are like that. Well, basically griots are like storytellers slash historians. However, although the griot is most often described as such, storyteller or historians, there is no comparable word in English to describe the griot's role. Griots serve in many capacities, including the amb an ambassadors, advisors, and masters of ceremonies. Traditionally, the role of griot passed from father to son and emphasized verbal and musical arts. Although fewer in number, women may also become griots or griotes. Today, a number of schools offer training in the griot arts. Travel is an important part of the training with aspiring griots learning from master griots in other regions or countries. Talented griots may become masters once they reach middle age. Although a griot may serve many roles, the most important one is keeping the past alive. In a way, history teachers or those who generally love to tell stories are like griots. Most early African civilizations such as Ghana and Mali did not develop a writing system until the Muslim traders brought the Arabic language and the writing system. So before the arrival of these traders, African passed on histories and stories orally, a method that historians call the oral tradition. In this manner, History, culture, and social values were transmitted from one generation to the next. Griots are born in a highly respected position, and they play an important role in the community. They are storytellers, poets, historians, and genealogists. And most importantly, they are musicians so that they make their stories more interesting. Griots almost always accompany their stories with songs, with music, and uh, using instruments like the kora, a string instrument similar to a harp, 
or a balafon, a kind of xylophone. So griots tell story about their villages, families, their kings, and they spent years of painstakingly memorizing family trees or names in the family and learning their stories. And griots dramatically told their tales at public ceremonies where excited crowds gathered to listen and learn. Stories about their ancestors and the exploits of kings were especially popular adventure. So for centuries, griots have passed down the epics of the Sahel through songs and stories with each person adding details that related to their lives and the lives of their audiences. This is how the stories remained relevant across generations and cultures. Now, before we go into the summary of this lesson, let's take a look at the different instruments or the popular instruments that were used by the griots. Now, generally, their instruments are like other cultures. They have percussion and strings. So on the left side, as you can see here, it's a balafon. It is a traditional African instrument made of wood and gourds. So it's like the shell of a pumpkin kind of fruit or vegetable and in the middle is the kora it is a string instrument similar to a mandolin and on the right side is a koni and it has two strings and it's made of wood and leather it is a lot like a ukulele i think and these are the instruments that the griots use now to summarize the lesson Number one, oral tradition was important because early African civilizations had no writing system. As simple as that. And Captivate suggests that Creos were able to completely command the attention of their audience by making them shocked, interested, fascinated, in awe, and a combination of all those emotions. So it is important for them to get or captivate their attention. Number three, the possible advantages of oral tradition, I guess, is to ensure history is not lost when civilization has no written language. Obviously, the possible disadvantage of this, as stories are passed down from one generation to the next, it may become distorted. You know that game, telephone? It is a lot like that. It becomes distorted. So there you go. That's our lesson for today. Chapter 4, Section 2.4, The Oral Tradition. Now go ahead and answer the review and assess questions using the race format. And when you're done, go ahead and turn it in. Thank you.